now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I'm The League Dad, and I am joined today uh, by Kevin and Mitchell. Unfortunately, Alistair, uh, this situation seems to be getting worse. Looks like he has no internet now, and like, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I think he's back. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's back at college or at school, but I don't know what's going on there. They're not treating him right, uh, as they should be treating a collegiate L, uh, a collegiate future LCS player. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just athlete. not. Yeah, he's an, he's an athlete. Uh, but I'm happy to be back. I missed you guys, uh, and I've been listening along, and I've been like, as you guys are talking, I'm like making my own comments. I'm like, no, yes, I agree. And like, I'm like nodding mm-hmm. my head to all the commentary. So really good stuff. Enjoyed hearing it. Um, and look, man. Finals is over and it was, uh, I mean, it was this weekend was just really interesting. Lots of surprises. Obviously, I'm sure if you're listening to this, you know, the results already. NRG is our champs, which is crazy. Uh, I think too bad Alistair isn't here because that, that was his team from the beginning saying they would make worlds. But, uh, you know, let me I did enough talking. I want to get your guys' initial reactions to just the overall finals results. What did you guys think about that? Uh, I was super excited. Like, for the longest time, we've called out C9, and then we're just like, yeah, but they always win, and it's not close usually. Mm-hmm. So this time around, we found we saw a team that, like, it honestly looked like they had an answer for everything that C9 tried, right? C9 had certain comps they were doing, like their game one, although they did win it. Um, I didn't think their comp was great. Uh, C9, every time they made a proactive play, it felt like NRG was ready. They had, like, they didn't panic. They played around objectives relatively well, and Palafox showed his class. Like I've been saying for a while, MNS isn't very good, guys. Mm, yeah. And he has a few good games, um, especially in playoffs. I'll give him that. But in the finals, he he got gapped like really hard. I think his he uh he TP top once to gank, then he just shot his Everfrost out of the TP when he was like a mile away from the enemy, then dashboard. And I was like, what is this guy doing? Um, so I'm really happy NRG. I believe some people were playing. This is the biggest upset ever in a final, uh, in LCS. And I, I actually mm. do agree because if you think about it, no, <clears throat> no other s- major org, uh, any only major orgs have won Liquid, TSM, Cloud9, and then 100 Thieves, right? Yeah. 100 Thieves EG. is the one exception. Uh, EG, oh, and EG, yeah. but EG, yeah, EG I mean, it was I kinda... a big upset too. That's true. That's true. Fair enough. I think NRG is still a bigger upset, though, because you have, instead of Inspired JoJo, you have what used to be just Academy Leftovers, guys. Like, there's three NA players on the top side going to Worlds, and at least the mid and the maybe the jungle are some of the best in the region. So I think that's incredible. I think that this is just, like, a great sign. Like, NA mids are eating good, Um, so... Yeah, I don't think we've ever had a chance to say that in the history of LCS ever since Bjergsen moved over here. Yeah, it's yeah, a new era. I mean, it's been a long time for NA mids. I think there was a statistic that this is the first time since 2015 we had NA solo laners uh, mm-hmm. win mm-hmm. a title. Uh, the last time it happened it was um, it was Darshan and Pobelter in 2015 mm-hmm. CLG. Uh, so it yeah, it's been a long time coming since we've had um, you know NA representation in the solo lanes. I think for NA mids, right? We, we've had a bit more, but it's it's just been pole belter, right? With like impact in top lane or something like that winning. Um, so yeah, Palafox is bringing it back with the NA mids. Dokla is bringing it back. Uh, yeah, my I mean my general impressions of the finals are that like energy really showed up and they played good League of Legends. But I do have to comment there were some really questionable things going on on the entire C9 roster. Like. Um, We'll get into the series more deeply. We'll mm-hmm. probably give a little farewell uh, talk to Team Liquid. Uh, before sure. We talk probably really in depth about Cloud Nine versus Energy because you know I think the finals was like very interesting, and the semifinals, while good, was like you know kind of blow for blow. Anybody could have taken that series really, mm-hmm. but I mean the Energy was a stomp, guys. Like yeah, Cloud Nine took Game One, but then Game Two was a stomp. Game Three was like close for a bit but mostly a stop and yeah game four was i mean i think a bit closer out of the uh energy wins but you know i don't know i felt like they were all energy favorite after game one so pretty weird stuff from cloud nine gotta say (laughs) yeah i mean 
I want to talk. Let's let's just dive into NRG, you know, some more just because they are the champs, right? Like this was a team that, you know, even before the the brand name switch, you know, on CLG, most of these players uh, were on it. And, you know, a lot of us were just like they're consistently inconsistent. And that was kind of the meme. Even I would say for me, my sentiment was still like that uh, up until this weekend, I think even before that, I was still like kind of. Like, I think you were saying it, Mitch, it was like, I don't know who to predict against Team Liquid and, you know, NRG because NRG could show up and could be good. I think what this weekend showed to me is even more so is that NRG has found their style, which is fight, 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 even if it looks bad, even if we mess up, even if we just lost a fight, we're going to come back and fight some more, right? And, uh... I really like how they kind of leaned into that because there were a lot of times, uh, I can't remember which game specifically, but they're actually down in gold. I think, you know, they're they're down in gold, but it doesn't feel like they are. Um, like they're, they're, they're proactively, and even the kill score, like they'll have five more kills than C9 and still be down like 2K because maybe C9's macro is a little better or they're getting more off the map. But NRG just doesn't stop. They just say, you know what, F it. This is our style and we're going to play it. And... You know, to comment even further, uh, to go specifically into like Dokla, you know, that guy, I know he was kind of, he wasn't looked at as a great top laner uh, by any means, um, but we alluded to this a few episodes back where it just still seemed that even though his laning was horrible, like his team fights and his impact on the map were incredible. And I think even even in this series, he he showed that. And so I don't know, like I, I'm... It, it is a team that already you can root for because of, you know, the whole NA thing. But to me, like their, their style of play is fun to watch. Like, yeah, they're going to make some oopsies. Um, and they may not have the best laner in Dokla, but when they come to team fights, it's going to be, it's going to be chaotic and it's going to be some crazy plays. So for me, that like, that was exciting to see for, for them. But, um, did you have any thought, uh, other thoughts on them? And, and as far as like, there's this amazing run that they had. Yeah, uh, I also wanted to give props to Ignar and FBI. Like, I think yes. FBI tweeted he's like the one dollar bot lane one. Uh, yeah, LCS because they were both rated as one dollar bot laners. I think Ignar stepped up. FBI did also step up, but we at least know he can do this level. I don't think we've seen a level like this from Ignar consistently, right? Not just a one off game in a while. Mm -hmm. I, I think he, at least in the finals, he was playing much better than Sven. I, I truly think that. Map movement, engagement angles, and just like willingness to be proactive was just on another level. And it, it was weird to think because honestly, I have a very low impression of Ignar for a while now. Mm. Uh, yeah, um, you know, we'll continue in the, in the bot lane for energy. And I do want to, do we want to talk about energy versus C9 first? Or do we want to talk about energy versus Team Liquid first? Because mm. I think we're going to start leaking into the conversations of the actual yeah. matches, right? And what's going on? I think we should start with TL because the meat of the thing should be the finals. So we'll just, yeah. we'll just yeah. talk about TL. Give them so a let's send just, off. Let's just talk about TL a bit then. Like, I think, yeah, this is the conversation that uh, we've been having a lot for playoffs is um, energy's bot lane is stable. They're good. Ignar is like, pretty pretty good right he has a lot of decent engages he has a lot of um you know decent peeling efforts uh and none of his plays go disastrously bad right i think that was the big difference still after you know a couple of weeks of playoff matches that when you compare core jj to ignar is core jj had some disastrous engages in their series versus yeah. uh nrg and you know, Ignar is just chilling. Like, he's not doing these ridiculous over-the-top engages where he's getting his whole team killed or he's in there with no flash and has no way out, right? Like, I still just get the impression that NRG is just playing normally. They're just playing good, solid League of Legends, and Team Liquid and Cloud9 are off losing their minds, making the most ridiculous plays, doing really stupid stuff. So when I think of, like, the Team Liquid series that did go blow for blow, back and forth... um, Man, yeah, there was a huge support gap. Like, and it was the fact that Ignar was very stable, very consistent, and Cordy J was whiffing madly on the engages over and over and over again, uh, yeah. and being just kind of an insane person. Um, for Team Liquid's sake, though, um, you know, focus on the bot lane. I do think Eon, he had a great series. Uh, he played pretty well, pretty consistently. But FBI was like, 
I don't know. It's like he's just ahead in CS. It feels like in every lane, uh, he is for some reason always getting Kaisa too. I think that is a big problem yeah. that both Team Liquid and C9 would look back on is mm -hmm. they just kept getting FBI Kaisa and they could not punish the weak laning phase or her weak mid game. And he was just farming up a storm. He was just not dying, but pos positioning well enough. And I didn't even think he was landing that good a poke. He was missing a lot of Ws, but it was not enough like pressure that uh, TL was able to get from their bot lane to actually overcome the insane Kaisa scaling that has been defining all of Summer Split, right? Oh, yeah. The beginning of Summer Split, all throughout regular season, all throughout playoffs, is that Kaisa is this giga mega scaler and. You should probably not be giving it to teams in general, period. <laughs> yeah. But uh, FBI kept getting it. He kept scaling. He kept being ahead in CS in the first 10 to 15 minutes somehow. Um, and I think that that is a really defining point for why Team Liquid lost and why, Ener or why C9 lost. Yeah. I think it's interesting because... Um, you know, Dokla is that weak side uh, or, you know, they don't really play for him, but um, it seemed like they did that more, uh, more so in the C9 series. But even in this series, they got him rumble a couple of times, uh, which is supposed to be, hey, we're going to I mean, rumble is going to win that matchup. So you have to devote some resources to it. And for all intents and purposes, I feel like Dokla did pretty well when they did kind of, uh, you know, give him some time, some jungler time on there. Right. And uh, he did well in lane, like when he had the chance to do it. Like maybe he's just not a good weak side type player or, or tank player or whatever. But um, I mentioned Dokla because I talked about how he's, you know, definitely a weak laner, but makes such an impact in fights. What do you guys think about the same thing is true with APA, right? Like here's this uh, mid laner who definitely doesn't typically you know, win in the CS battle and, and probably gold at, you know, 10 minutes or whatever, but... And he had Nico every time except game five. Um, and his he always seemed to make pretty good uh, engages. And um, to me, he still seemed to have an impact on that. And honestly, like, I've, I value that a lot because, you know, especially when Core's not making any good plays, uh, you have this guy who's who's willing to take those those risks, those angles, and try to try to make the play for you. And, and they kind of relied on him for that. So I guess what I'm getting to is, you know, real quickly, like, I personally would take a laner like that who may not look good on the stat sheet and people might just say like, yeah, they're terrible laners. But I think when it comes to like, if I want to win the game, like, do I want a summit? Like, cause I'll get to him in a little bit, but summit to me, like, is that great laner who just doesn't seem to do anything, but yet he's regarded and by anybody in the, in the, um, you know, I think even fudge said it, like most people, uh, the top laners in the LCS say that Summit is a nightmare to lane against, right? But who cares if you still lose the game or if you still die and give over other parts of the map? So, you know, it seems to me there are two polarizing types of laners now. And maybe I'm not the best laner, but I'm just going to lean into the fact that I can play team fights well and set up for objectives well. What are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, what would you rather have if it was your team? Like, a, would you rather have a Dokla APA or, or someone like a Summit and... You know, maybe even JoJo, who you know is really lane dominant, but might not have so much so much impact later. I think that it depends on the role you're playing. I think when you're in top lane, Giga stomping your lane and making a snowball has a lot more impact because you can play Bruisers, you can play Aatrox, and you could just run through the team. Right? We saw so many fights where I don't think it was Summit being bad team fight. He was the last one alive on Aatrox or whatever carry Gwen, and he was putting out a lot of pressure. So to me. If you're a top laner, I think a dominant top laner has generally been the way to go, just in the history of the league. That's why Zeus, that's why 369 Zoom, like all these people that we regard highly, you know, that's why we shit on Doran, people yeah. like that, because they're like, when it comes down to it, top lane is like out in the middle of nowhere. And it's, mm -hmm. if you need to dedicate resources there, a lot of shit can happen around Dragon, the bot lane can get stomped as well. While in mid lane, like wave clear is built into your kit. You also have a shorter lane and you also can roam. So. If you're better at team fighting, like the Yagaos of the world, like the, mm. um, not, not Chovy. Uh, I'm trying to think Faker. of the, well, the modern Faker, yes, yeah. So Faker people are good is, at team fighting, setting up. Yeah. Like it's that, not like laying well. <laughs> that's what you need, right? That's what you need in a mid lane, or that's what is beneficial. You you can also choose like you know a Showmaker, Naguri, Canyon, right, top side, and that that can be super cool in some metas. But a lot of the time, we I feel like carry top lane, especially internationally makes the difference right when we bring our carry top our 
weak side top laners. We get Giga stomped at Worlds. Like, when have we brought a Summit style top laner to Worlds? Sunday, maybe in his prime? Yeah. I kind of, I'm going to disagree, I think, pretty heavily on that, where um, I think a lot of the best top laners in the world are, can be very lane dominant, but the actual ones who end up winning the trophies and the titles, uh, they are the ones that are a bit weak side. So I think of, like, yeah, I mean, when you think of LC LCK domestically, right, Doran does have a pretty sus laning phase, uh, but he does show up in team fights, and Zeus, I mean, has an insane laning phase, but he's not winning any titles. So I think that is maybe a key difference where... League of Legends top lane is such an island that like it doesn't matter if you get that lane dominant because if you can yeah. team fight better than it then you overcome that that lane dominance that the other player might get just because for the past couple of years League of Legends is so bot lane focused where yeah. if you're a tank and you're behind but your bot lane's better and ahead and all the jungle attention went to bot lane versus the enemy got a lot of top lane jungle attention like I just think bot lane sways that and then I also think of like you know, when I think of like EDG or FPX or a lot of these like uh, one off Chinese teams that won and then split up, right? They had super hard weak side top lanes, right? We haven't had like a strong side top laner win worlds since like what, Nuggery and maybe the Shy, but everything in between that is weak side top laners winning worlds um, that can still be strong side. They'll still dumpster the hell out of NA top laners, right? They'll still dumpster yeah. the hell out of the majority. But when it comes to like the matchup, in finals where it's like the best two top laners one of them is a bit more lane dominant gets jungle attention one of them is super weak sided i feel like the weak side team with the better bot lane always wins um but that's in the extreme examples right i think if we're looking at na though i'm i'm down to try the, the strong side top lane because we don't get any results for either one right we don't get any yeah. results if <laughs> we're, we're we're having the strongest top laner up there and the lcs doesn't matter we're not getting anything we play weak side top laner right that's that's what kept happening with fudge is Fudge was for a while trying to play strong side top, and, you know, nothing happens. Nothing matters, right? So mm -hmm. you play weak side top, and you know what? Honestly, still nothing happens. Nothing matters that much. So um, I think the point Kevin's trying to make is, like, it'd be interesting to see a Summit-like player at Worlds to mm -hmm. lane well against other top laners enough. Maybe that's that's something that can bring us over the edge in terms of NA power level. Um, but when I think of, like, the absolute best, like... At the actual top, I mean, Kingen, right, last year at DRX, he was getting a lot of jungle attention thrown at him, like, um, from the Zeus side. Like, Zeus is getting counter picks, but, you know, he's blind picking Aatrox, he's getting dumpstered in lane, he's getting ganked a bunch, and he just shows up in team fights that he's better. So, yeah, that's my take on that, uh, on the top lane and the, uh, and, and mid lane too, right? Uh, let's go back to NA and talk about APA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. APA, I honestly think, was the best player for Team Liquid in that series. Like, yeah. kind of by a long shot. Um, I think Pioshik was pretty good, but inconsistent. I think Summit was. I don't think. I'm not going to say he was bad. He had one bad game in game five. I think it was pretty solid, but um, it's just not impactful enough, I think, what he was doing mm -hmm. because the rest of his team was so disjointed. And, and the real problem child for me was just Core JJ, man. Like, Core JJ was such a problem child that even though APA was making the most sickest engages on Nico yeah. possible, like literal faker level Nico engages, uh, you like you go listen to the broadcast or the or the, uh, the co streams, they're saying like, how does APA get like a four man Nico ulti literally every team? every time, yeah. every single time? It's insane. So, I mean, when it comes to APAs, like, I mean, if you can do that, I don't care if you're down 50, 70 CS, right? That's that's four man CC engage. That's good enough for me, man. That's pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I mean, props off to APA. I think, like, for his first series, like, or for his first playoffs in his first um, time in a big stadium, he showed up pretty well. I was yeah, really impressed with what APA could do. I mean, I will say, though, the problem was it was only on Nico he was doing that, right? Yeah. He played four games of Nico, one game of Xerath. Xerath was pretty hit or miss. It wasn't the worst thing in the world, right? But, like, four games of Nico, yes, it's amazing each time you play Nico. But look at Energy's drafts, guys. Mm -hmm. Like, you do not want to play Nico against, what, Tristana Ezreal with a bunch of frontline Braum. It's literally the exact Golden Guardians comp. They lost to Team Liquid in Game 5. Yeah, Energy just played it well. They didn't just, like, jump onto a Gwen or something like that. Or, yeah. like, a Zir Zaya. Like, I don't want to play Nico into a Zir Zaya. So he has to play Xerath, and he's not as comfortable. So yeah, that's a bit mm -hmm. about APA, in my opinion, in that he played an insane Nico, but... 
the draft variety did hurt them, I think. They had to play hard engage comps every time, and energy was really good at countering it. I mean, he absorbed two bands almost every game. Actually, every game. He absorbed yeah. Tristana's, Ziggs almost every game, and um, Cassie's, right? So Yeah, Cassie. He, as far as draft resources go, not a lot of NA mid laners, native NA mid laners not named JoJo, right? Do that much pressure in draft while still being useful on their, like, fourth pick or whatever they pick, right? So, honestly... Oh, it was also first half, so two out of three first bands were always his his characters. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, that's incredible. Um, I think it's so incredible, yeah. yeah. I definitely give him credit as well. I think Pioshek would be the second uh, place person. And through all playoffs, I think Pioshek was better, but the fact that APA got stomped by Palafox the first series and came back mentally, like, honestly, when do we see that from NA players not named CLG? <laughs> yeah. No. No, it's absolutely I mean, right. Just a... Uh... I think just just to like capitalize on the fact that I'm not trying to blame APA for his, his his like pick. It's like when you do pick Nico though, I think like the mistake that Team Liquid did is they wanted to surround the Nico with other hard engage, and that was like the problem. Right? It's not systemically just a Nico problem. It's like they're picking Nocturne, they're picking Rel, and they're just trying to go in with the Nico and stuff. And like I think if you look at other team comps that other teams play around the world, like T1. Is you don't have to play and commit all to hard engage with the Nico. Um, and you can and it can work, but like when you are picking Nico early and then you're early rotationing like a Nocturne or a Viego and stuff, and then you just see on the enemy team they have like Braum, Tristana, Ezreal. Like it's so hard to play the game if you fall behind. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, even stuff like LeBlanc or Kaisa, right? These are all things that are like really difficult to play around if you ever fall behind and it kept happening because um you know the rest of Ener or rest of team liquid was not consistent enough in the engages and honestly it's the same story i'm going to bring up about cloud nine is that they kept trying to play hard engage comps into energy who had like you, they just have kaisa like you don't want to play hard engage into kaisa if you can surround it with stuff like a tristana and a brahm and a rakan or other really good disengaged champions so um yeah. I, I think it's less about APA's champ pool and his pick and more of that, like, it didn't fit with the surrounding things that Team Liquid was doing. And yeah. even though he got to shine, it wasn't enough to carry, right? Because, I mean, Nico's just not that kind of champion. She doesn't do big yeah. damage. Yeah, and, you know, he also had some really sick Ws, uh, Jukes on Nico. I feel oh, like yeah. every like time, <laughs> like, every time he gets them and then he'll emote that, I'm just like, this guy is... Dude, he's it was just... getting me. I was it like, get oh, me! Yeah. I thought that was the fake. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was the fake. He tricked us. Every single time. Interview. Yeah. I thought he was tricking Captain Flowers, too. Yeah. Like, he was the juking the hell like, zoom in to the fake. Yeah, to the fake one. one. Yeah, you're like, he what? He was too good at... Like, it's literally the best I've ever seen in professional play. It's so Nico good. Jukes. It was really yeah. good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I, you mentioned that all these teams, like C9 and Team Liquid, kept trying to go for this hard engage stuff. And I really wanted to point out, in particular, Game Five's draft between Team Liquid and NRG because NRG, so Team Liquid had Rel, uh, you know, um, they had, who did they have? Uh, Nautilus and Nar. And NRG had Alistar and Poppy. And Poppy just like cucks everybody so hard. And that was another one they played Poppy, you know, especially on contracts. That's one of his Yo. better champs. He's, he's so good on it. And like, I from draft, already like i hate being that guy but like i just had a sick feeling like once i saw saw what was going to be out there i kind of had a sick feeling that tl was just going to lose like zarath i've seen it it is oh, a good absolutely. pick and it's strong but i just don't like it really in in pro play right now i don't know i just feel like it's too easy to punish right like laning yeah you can hit them from two miles away but in a real team fight you're just gonna get owned like i just feel like it just doesn't survive long enough to really do do much stuff i, I, I think uh, you have to wait till you see a really good Zareth. i think he's super broken right now do so you i actually think the pick is like i personally think that the Zareth was the only correct pick here in that draft right it's uh azir zaya they can't do anything against the Zareth. Um, it's, well i know azir i know it's kind of like a counter to azir as well but yeah, and uh, zaya. yeah. Like oh, and Zaya, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but I would say that the Nar is the problem. Every time I've seen him, <laughs> oh, that's a good point Nar, too. So You're right. <laughs> yeah, he picked it. And I was like, oh no. Isn't that what supposed to be his up. champion too? Like, isn't he like he's a Nar? Two and nine on it. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so historically, he was very good at it. When he came into the scene, that was one of the characters he bodied the region with. 
Like right. this year, I watch every game. Every time I see that NAR, I'm like, it's it's over. We're gonna lose. <laughs> and then I watch <clears throat> I watch T1 Pickett in in their game too, and it was absolute dog shit in their last game in their series. Because mm. yeah, these super carries pick NAR, and he's just not as good as he used to be, especially yeah. with Poppy in the game. Like, what were they thinking? They just mm-hmm. it is almost certainly a confidence pick. Someone said, I'll win the game, I'll win lane, blah blah blah, I'll carry. And he just he just can't do it. It's not that good right now. At least I, into yeah. what they played into. I, I I think you're right that it's not that good, but also it's into Rumble, right? I don't think like I actually was surprised how often Energy got blind pick Rundle, Rumble and yeah. sometimes chose to not blind pick Rumble. Like Rumble is just too broken. Everybody says it like everywhere that there's no counter pick to Rumble. You blind that shit, nobody can win against it. So mm-hmm. um I think like the mistake is just it's just not supposed to give blind pick Rumble. Everybody's yeah, just not supposed yeah. to get Rumble. Just don't do so, it. So yeah. I like it's like I, I I mean nobody likes to talk about draft that much because it's like oh well then what's the point yeah. of playing the game right but sure. like seriously guys rumble's that broken where you could see any player picks it they win lane hard and they have so much free time that I mean I just have to assume that you shouldn't be giving it right and yeah guess what like he like Dokla had the most insane play he's dumpstering so hard on rumble that he gets in game one against Team Liquid he gets to leave lane and gank bot with rumble throw an ulti down, TP top, miss nothing, yeah, yeah. right? Like, what kind of champion is allowed to do that? <laughs> Where you can push out top, gank bot, have it work, win the game, and then go TP top and not lose anything. So, I mean, the NAR was pretty bad, but also it's like, what is he supposed to do? He can't pick anything into Rumble that is actually feels good, so. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe it was like a comfort pick, or at least what he thinks is a comfort pick. Yeah, he he's out. probably like, you know, I'll just outrange Rumble. I'll just outplay yeah. him, bro. Like, I don't know. You just well, get snatched. losing, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so uh, bad. Oh, my God. I mean, <laughs> and Dokla did have some really good uh, Rumble ults, too. Yeah, he was insane. Especially so in, good. <laughs> in, yeah, both series, but even in the, yeah, especially in the C9 when I felt like there were so many good ones. But um, is there, uh, so let, I mean, this is the farewell to, I mean, not everyone, everyone's done now, but Team Liquid. You know, where do they go? <laughs> in, in this series, it was farewell to them. What, what? You know, uh, any final notes on them or, like, where do they go from here? Do they try this roster again? You know, there, there was some bright yeah. spots and all that stuff. So, what, what you know, Kevin, what, what, what you got for your boys here? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I've been following Liquid for so long. And the Bjergsen roster, I had a lot of faith for it, right? But just, you know, never had any magic. Mm-hmm. This Liquid roster has magic. If Core is playing this bad on, on average and they're looking this good on, overall, this team has it. Like, that 1857 game, that was disgusting. They yeah, absolutely yeah. tore... I mean, part of it is because NRG likes to keep fighting, right? And no matter yeah. if they lose... They <laughs> yes, just, they like, do. This game. They'll pick Aesol. <laughs> yeah, and Aesol. the magic. And we have to keep in mind, NRG's been together... This core has been together for years, and then yeah. only the bot lane changed. Team Liquid subbed in the second half when they had, like, a shit show of a beginning season, and Harry was always a problem. Their Miller barely speaks, like, no, he doesn't speak the language that the others are doing. They're just like, good job, ABA. Like, this is literally <laughs> yeah. one of the most exciting rosters to watch. Every game they play in is a banger. Every series they play in is, like, exciting. And they've only played together at a regional level. They're going to go to LCK, or Korea, and mm-hmm. boot camp together. Maybe APA will learn Korean in there. I don't know, but, like... Yeah, it's awesome. I honestly think it's super exciting. They have yeah. two NA players that they graduated from academy that are looking in the, maybe the top four, top three, depending on the day, in their roles already. That's crazy. Like, Jan, besides game five, he was great throughout the whole playoffs. He has so much poise. So I'm really excited for them. I just want Core to, like, get his, his mind together. I have no idea. Like, Can, can, can he, he still do it? As a team leader. Do you think he could still do it, Kevin? I mean, he's he's kind, you know, he's at the trail end of his career. Yeah, his career. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's a kind of a controversy to take, but I want him to do it, but I don't think he can. I think yeah. he's been on enough rosters, especially once he's helped create. And he's been with like, Jan is actually consistent. Like he's not an interdog. He's not sure. tactical, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe tactical broke core. Like, <laughs> like actually, it's, core just like yeah. He's just so used to having to cover for his spot laner. That he had, he's just like never out of that abusive relationship. It's like he just keeps having Stockholm syndrome. He's like, I miss tactical, and yeah. then he just ints. Uh, I I honestly don't think the chances are in his favor, but I I also think Liquid made the right choice keeping him. I mean, he probably has other value as a team leader. True. Like he's always charismatic. He's always smart about the game outside of the the rip. Like whenever you see him on shows, 
he points to map states, he points to rotations, like what should they be doing? And he's like, probably a large part of the reason they know how to play early games so goddamn mm. well. It's just yeah. him himself, he can't do it. He's like the faker of their bot lane. Uh, like, he yeah. plays the same role as faker. I can see that. Roster, right? Not winning lane, getting ganked all the time, kind of inting, but if Core leaves this roster, this roster is like temporarily bottom seven, like seventh place, sixth place. Mm. Yeah, IMO. Yeah, I mean, I think for Core, uh, like, yeah, he, he goes for a lot of rough looks, rough engages, and he's got some poor mechanical misplays that have been plaguing him pretty much all split all year. Uh, and they were cropping up last year too, right? Like, this, uh, like you know, maybe Tactical broke him. I also think the switch to Enchanters for a whole year broke him too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just yeah. rough. Um, and, you know, the divorce of Doublelift and Cordra J, neither one's doing that great. Obviously, Cordra J is looking a lot better than mm -hmm. Doublelift. But, like, you know, it's just time gets there. It gets to you. It's old. I wouldn't be surprised, like, if Cordra J took a year off and coached because... The mm. out of game stuff, I firmly believe in. Yeah, I think Cordy J is insane in the out of game stuff. Um, so maybe he's got some coaching uh, future for him. But honestly, when it comes to age stuff, I'm mostly joking because we do know that there are a lot, quite a lot of older players who are still being the best. Right? Like, just think of Ruler. Ruler is, I mean, he's not old literally, but in league terms, he's yeah. very old, and he's probably the best player in the world maybe knight is these guys are not new right they're they've been around the scene for a long time so i don't think age actually is it i wouldn't be surprised if quarter is getting a little burnout maybe he needs to give his wrist a break True. take a year to coach i bet you could come back in a year maybe you gotta ramp up a bit and he could be really good again um you know i i maybe you could come back and be bad like bjergsen and double f but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know like so, I mean, that's my comments on Cordy J. I, I don't want to see him gone. I do firmly believe in the out-of-game stuff. But the in-game stuff, it was serious losing. Yeah, it was rough. When was Alo was getting coached by Core, he looked like a top three, top two support in the league. Yeah. And there was not a small sample. There was, like, at least a couple games, right? They played Alo. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, actually, I don't know if he actually got co coached by Core, but at least in the past he had been because he was the academy support for so long, right? And yeah. the second Alo leaves Core's wing, he looks like he's brain dead. Like, I'm sorry. He he really looks bad. Um, besides, like, having some hands in the few moments. His yeah. average was so low. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, it is kind of like the Faker role. Like, where uh, I think Faker, obviously, on a much higher level. But, even you know, he's, Faker's definitely not the mechanical god that he was before. So, I mean, same with Core, uh, in a sense that yeah, I think you're right, Kevin. If he's not on that roster, they probably crumble, just like T1 crumbled without Faker. And maybe that is enough value that even if he flubs in game, he's still bringing... Like, they probably wouldn't even be in that position if he wasn't in the game. So, uh, you know, maybe it's his fault, but at the same time, they're, they're where they're at probably because of him. But that's all, you I, know, I mean, if you look at Team Liquid's rest of the roster, right, just look at the top side. Summit and Pioshik are notorious, like, brain-off players. Like, their yeah, entire yeah. career. So, you know, I mean, yeah. I buy it. Like, sure, Pioshik's playing great, but, like, we know when Pioshik doesn't have a good support, right? If he's got yeah. no barrel, nor Crojo J. He has spent years and years inting his brains off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Well, uh, you know, it was good Good to see TL uh, make it this far. I mean, you know, again, they they, they did some things, and it, I think it's good stuff from here. Let's go to the, the other series, the finals, Cloud9, NRG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, most people, the I think, one. Mitchell, I just got to remember what you said last episode. You're like, I don't care who wins. Energy or Team Liquid, they're getting 3 0 by C9. That's what you said. You're welcome, Energy fans. <laughs> I did it for you. Okay? I thought of Elster, and I was like, you know what? There's only one way to guarantee yeah. an Energy win is to literally so was, fully yeah. be not believe in them. Right, right, right. I had so, to believe it to my core. It, they have you to thank, uh, NRG fans do. So, uh, but what an amazing series. Again, the thing I just want to point out is that they. I felt picked for Dokla. Like, I, I mean, he got Rumble the first game, which they lost, but they also he also got Jax the rest of the games. Like, that's and he did well too. And they kind of played and gave him some resources to to let him flourish. And he he did amazing. Like, it was just uh, it was just fun to watch and really see him, you know, do his thing. But you know, give me your thoughts on this series. Um, again, a, a surprising upset. But you know, what what did you guys think? I think it was incredibly ballsy the day before the finals match. That they did not pick Jax. They didn't show that they could use Jax at all. Yeah. And they were they literally hit game five and they were like, Yeah, we'll pick Rumble, which is obviously something Dokla's good at. But mm -hmm. Jax is disgusting, dude. Ja if you know how to play him, I like when's the last time you like someone did the pocket pick? Like they hit a pick that everyone thought they couldn't play and actually yeah. did something, especially an NA player, right? 
um, the Ziggs was something, but that was during regular season, right? When it all mattered in game five against Liquid, yeah. where like Liquid just 18 minutes stopped them, he's like, we are winning the championship or we're getting third. Nothing in between. I'm locking in Rumble. And I was like, geez, that is, that's incredible. I I think his jacks wasn't like the best jacks ever. Sure. But it was suffice. It, like, yeah. you know, for a guy who has not played it at all or almost at all during the whole season, he actually tricked Fudge into thinking you can't play jacks. And it was probably a mental diff. Just, like every draft, they're like, what the hell? He played <laughs> yeah. jacks. Was like, and he continued to play. Like Fudge literally tried everything. He tried Renekton, Aatrox, and Rumble. And he's just like, I can't, like, I can't, like, they kept killing him, but, like, he just kept being impactful later. He he literally shut down, I think he was the difference between shutting down Berserker or not. Because a lot mm -hmm. of times Berserker was hard carrying, like, playing out of his mind in some of these fights on Zeri. Oh, yes. And then the guy is twirling his baton with a Zanyas or a stopwatch, and it's like, yeah, yeah goodbye, it's like, seven seconds of your life, because he can just double E if he has enough CDR. It's like, uh -huh. it's actually disgusting. I think that's one of the greatest, like, tactical plays I've seen since, like, 2015 EDG baiting the fakers LeBlanc sort of thing. Or I think there was also another case with DRX. But my point is, super sick. I'm super happy for energy. Even Cloud9 fans were cheering for them in the arena. Which yeah. is, like, unusual. Like, when is the time where... I mean, Cloud9 fans aren't the new TSM fans, but they're, like, one of the dominant teams, right? When do they yeah. cheer for the underdog, right? Well, as their team's getting smacked. Um, but that's yeah. just how important this match was for everyone. Sure. Um, so that's my starting point. Uh, I, I really think that the balls for them to hijack until this series almost single-handedly got onto the mental edge. I I mean, I think the funniest thing is the interview right after where he confirms it. He's like, yeah, I baited all you idiots. Like, he literally <laughs> tells everybody in the interview the exact strategy yeah. Kevin is describing. Yeah. It's like, I tricked the whole world into thinking I couldn't play Jax just to bust it out in the finals. Like, Oof. that's... I don't even know if, like, what to think of that. Is that even good? I don't know if it's good, but it is hella sick. It's so hype. Because, um, I mean, Jax has been broken for, like, a year, right? Yeah. So, like, is that even good strategy? Because you're kind of risking your regular season to not mm. play Jax. Because there are some other players, like Licorice and, like, Doran and, like, Zeus and stuff. They they only played Jax throughout mm -hmm. the entire regular season. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, that he busted out for the first time in finals. So, I mean, good for, good for them that it works, but... That is risky. That is like non-rational gaming right there <laughs> to the extreme. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Dokla, like, I think the thing like that really was about it was like, he was just walking away from ganks. And I don't know, that is a mix between obviously Dokla playing well, mm -hmm. but also like, what the hell is Cloud9 doing, bro? It's like, Annie and Aatrox are sitting in a bush. They get the jump on to a Jax, and you know what he does? He just cues away. Like, did you guys not think this gank through? Did yeah. you spend all that time trying to gank him, and he just cues away? Like, he doesn't even press ulti. You press all your ultis. Like, I so I have to say that like I'm gonna keep harping on this, where energy looks like they're just playing normal good League of Legends, and the enemy team is just being buffoons. Maybe it's just an NA thing, and I've been watching too much LPL and LCK. But like, I really feel like energy is just doing the things you're supposed to do. The normal stuff, you know, you play mechanical fights just correctly. Nothing like extra spectacular or like mind blowing that we see sometimes in other regions. But C9 is doing the most questionable, weird things that never work, that wouldn't work in a million years. Um, so, I mean, that was Fudge, right? I really felt like there's a lot of times where Fudge is like, dude, like, uh, there's a time he's getting like three main ganked, right? And he goes for a Q flash. I'm like, yo, you just Q flat, you, you Q three flashed onto a guy who had like 40% HP. There's nowhere in any world does that ever kill. Just save your flash and die, right? It's the same thing with like a lot of different plays that I felt like Eminem was going for. It's like, you just like jumped over a wall and tried to charm somebody. It wasn't even close. But if you think about it, what if you landed all your abilities on a Swishy? Your charm, your Everfrost, your Q, your W. You know what? You got Everfrost, Banshee's Veil. You're not killing that guy, even if yeah. you do land it. So a lot of these C9 plays are not thought out at all. They were not good plays that they go, and they got punished hard. So, I mean, I, I don't want to take away from Energy Steam. I think it's actually a big compliment to say of an NA team that they look like they're just playing consistent, good, solid League of Legends. But, man, Cloud9, like, they were just whiffing. They were just making so many just plays that would never work in a million years and then they whiff on top of that <laughs> well we i mean we kind of saw that in cloud nine you know even though they won two you know got two three o's uh, yep. in their previous series all of us were like well 
Uh, well, in my head, I wasn't on the, the episodes, but in my head, I was like, yeah, Cloud9 didn't look that great, even though. And that's why, you know, to be fair, even though they were talking junk, like they're like, yeah, we're not dropping a game because they're like they even knew if we're playing this bad and we're still three owing teams. Yeah. Why would you think you're going to lose? But unfortunately, NRG ramped up. They leveled up and, you know, they they took it to them like they, they played consistent. They brought their A game to the finals and Cloud9 yeah. did it. Um, I did want to, you know, highlight again. Uh, Palafox because this is a guy that uh, you know uh, he tweeted that he almost retired like he he just like if I don't go to Worlds this year I just was calling it you know quits and even you know people in the scene to be fair have always given Palafox credit and have always said that this this guy's legit he's good uh, I think even Bjergsen tweeted you know that he was really proud of him and you know that he he had believed in him so long, and I believe he'd kind of got some training under Palafox because I think TSM brought him in, right, uh, an academy before or something like that. I'm not quite sure. I think I read it in context. But either way, the point is is that he's been grinding, and he's been playing so well. People have noticed him, but he just could never get to the top. And here he is playing well. I mean, he... he I mean, he picked out Lucian mid. They didn't win that game. I thought that was cool. They got Jace, uh, Talia, and his Nico game was uh, not that great either. But still, this guy in his series has just been an absolute monster. I mean, they drew five, you know, four uh, um, Azir bands because he's just so good on it, right? Like, this guy's made so many highlight moments. And I just wanted to spotlight him, uh, you know, because I've been talking about Dokla, but Palafox, man, he he really deserved it. Talk, talk a little bit about him and his run uh, to the top. I would say we uh, we mentioned that we previewed this at the beginning, right? Like we haven't had an A mid hope until Jojo came into this region, mm. and having two hopes and maybe even three if we count APA and yeah, honestly I insanity. Would. Like we have so many NA mid hopes. Like where did these people come from? I would say they're better than the incumbents. Besides mm. Gory when he was good, who else of the import mid lanes are are even like in the conversation? Eminus, sure. But mm. is he was he better than Palfox Fox in the series? No. Absolutely. Heck no. Eminus looked bad, right. actually. Yeah. He yeah, might have been better bad. at the first stage of playoffs, but like I think Eminus' average from regular season to playoffs was lower. Um, so that's exciting as hell, because JoJo's not always gonna have the best team around him, right? But he he was really improved this year. Um, you know, until everyone focused him. Like, what are you gonna do? Like it's just impossible to play. Um so I'm really excited for this. We I think we, we put F in the chat for Copy and Five Fire and the other Academy mids that like never got a chance that were also good at the same time as APA was good, at the same time as True. all these people who are just like led to the wayside besides Palafox, even like a Blaze Olive, right? Is gone. Yeah, Blaze Olive, yeah. It's crazy um, how much of a bad rep NA mids got for so long, which meant like if you're picking a pro role to go, most people pick like anything but mid. They pick AD mm -hmm. carry because they want to carry. They play jungle because they, you know, they're cerebral but not hands, whatever. Or maybe they're hands but not cerebral. They rarely pick top and they rarely pick mid, right? So really happy for Palafaker. I also think outside of like, you know, the stats and like the eye test, like his ability to find angles, like he just like I remember the bomb dragon pit when he's over the wall next to the where the blast line normally is and he flashes over and just like giga stomps. Berserker, I was like, oh my uh, god, yeah. he just mm -hmm. won the fight. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah. Uh, it was like looking kind of dicey, and like Connor was playing so well, but he just kept finding angles. He queued in on Jace more so than any Western Jace has ever yeah. he did. He's ever. in there. Uh, <laughs> he's in there. Because usually they're just like poke bots, honestly. Yeah. I, I think they're so afraid to queue in. And he was going in at good times, like 80% of the time, 85%. Like he was just yep. playing multi man queues, E peel, and then just like Giga Blast. So I, I honestly think. Him playing characters that weren't just like, and uh, credit to APA for being able to play Nico, but like those are like niche picks, right? The hands picks, like Jace, we've never been able to play. Even mm -hmm. when Poe Beltro was good. Even when Jensen was good. I mean, he's not NA, but like he's been here long enough. I count him as NA. Yeah. We, yeah. we just always have been bad at Jace. Like, did oh, Bjergsen yeah. play Jace? No. No, no, no. I don't want to see that shit. I don't want to see it either. <laughs> I don't want to see that. No. I don't want to see great at LeBlanc, Syndra, in Italy, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what I always remember him for. He was not yeah. a Jace player. Who was a Jace player in history? maybe high because he was also like a zed player and a talent play like played 80 stuff but i don't think i ever saw him play jace like at a high level so yeah 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 i mean palfox is palfox is really good i mean he's really i mean i don't know man when i watch him play jace i feel like he does more damage than my jace like just naturally like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> he just like is one tapping people i'm like yeah okay dustblade needs a nerf because that's a little too much damage and luckily mm. dustblade is finally nerfed mm -hmm. but 
yeah, Jace is broken. I'm actually surprised watching the other regions. Like Jace was not really high priority. Uh, it like I don't I don't understand drafts fully that much across the regions because you you go to LCK right. It's like they're on the same patch or something. Or Jace hasn't been nerfed, but he spent all year being high prio and just disappeared. And then in NA we're still picking Jace, and I'm like. Yeah, it seems pretty darn good. It seems pretty yeah. like just, you just one-shot people. Yeah. And you also poke them from half a mile away if you're not one-shotting them. So, uh, I mean, I have to comment on the drafts for NRG. It's like they got all the meta picks, and they just played them, like, really solidly, consistently. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, Jace Kaisa is a freaking nightmare in the late game. And guess what? You have an Ivern who's full clearing at three minutes and five seconds to, like, bridge the early game. And all of a sudden, contracts are just in every lane, everywhere, all the time. So, like... It's like the team play to allow Palafox to just be in side lanes and go absolutely bananas. Like, when, when, when is, is is a, a Renekton supposed to lose like one v one side lane pressure? Right? He's get like Palafox is one v twoing people, <laughs> both the solo yeah. laners in a side lane. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Play so bot lane was so sick. That play bot lane was literally like, yo, you played it almost as perfectly as you possibly could have. That was could've. so like, good. The yeah. Zonia's on the Renekton stun. That's hard to do. Uh -huh. Because it's a, it's like you know, it's a very quick animation. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I was very impressed by Palafox's mechanics and obviously his game sense to like jump in and dumpster berserker all that stuff. Uh, and then you look at the like other times though, the other parts of the game, like his Talia and his uh, Nico, right? Like it's not like he's playing amazingly, but like he has such a wide champion pool that it it just fits his team comp so well. He doesn't have to play that great. Like the Talia is such a great answer in that spot that, yeah. you know, he didn't play it perfectly. He made a couple of mistakes, but like, look at how many dashes the enemy team has. Look how mobile uh, C9's comp is. Aatrox, Ari, Zeri. Mm -hmm. And he's able to just pull out Talia that hasn't seen play all split long and play pretty darn consistently, pretty darn well. So like Palafox's play goes from like literal, like, god tier mvp wins you the game versus he picks just the right champion at the right time and does his job and yeah. the rest of his team can actually pull up the the slack um so Palfox fox is very um i don't know multi-dimensional player i actually expect to see him do pretty well at worlds i seriously expect it that he's gonna do well at worlds uh i don't know how many games energy will actually win after worlds man you can't say that now i know sorry, you're I don't you're I, they're no, gonna energy's gonna lose all the games that's don't right really wrong. they're losing Alpox everything still gonna smurf, but... yeah 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 <laughs> uh okay well any parting words for uh both of these teams since it's, since it's all done cloud nine again do they i mean obviously still a good roster fudge wasn't looking so hot um uh, but you know yeah. i don't think I it's time to, it's not time to quit on them right uh, you know cloud nine right they, no, they, they still, still get more chances well i mean like for uh, i'm just thinking ahead like to next year after worlds and all that stuff so we still do have to see what they have but they're as far as their roster like you know what do they need to shore up and you know is it is it in the top lane you know wh where do you think they need to, to get better at i think that they need to get better at top and mid i i think that you can have eminence on this team or you can have fudge on this team but you can't have both i i don't think they evenly exert the kind of pressure it's like okay to me summon apa is actually a good combo because one puts a lot of pressure out, and one is losing lane on average, right? And mm -hmm. that's actually a fairly good mix to have. Sure. Because then you can divert attention from mid lane, because they have to pay resources to some. But on the Fudge and Eminus, like, I think Eminus actually CS is okay. He usually is ahead. But, like, he doesn't translate that much. If they're not winning, like, I at least in this finals. I, I would say mostly this finals. I just did not see anything from him. And then Fudge, I also didn't see anything from him. I, I felt like he was probably the weakest point, but... That's fine if it's once in a while, but we've seen enough series where Fudge goes international and we're just like, where did Fudge go? Mm -hmm. Like, Fudge just disappeared. Uh, so to me, it's like you replace one or the other. Uh, you don't have to replace both. I think they're both valuable players, but Fudge is also native. So yeah, it's a lot easier to replace, replace MNS. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, re I'm not even going to think of or talk about replacing anything. There's no point, right? There's a whole Worlds to play. I think most teams and orgs and fans... Like, they base their opinion on how well you play at Worlds, right? Like, it's right true, now, cause, yeah, they could smurf in Worlds. Yeah, 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 like, we just have no idea, right? Like, some orgs, like, I really fault them. They make choices to replace their players or GMs or coaches before Worlds even starts. And you're like, mm -hmm. hello, dude? <laughs> like, this is the most important time to make your choices and decisions to base your opinions on. So, I don't even care. Like, C9, they lost to finals, right? They've been good all year long. Fudge and Eminez, yeah, sure, they are not been the best in their role, but, like, I still think they played the team play stuff well 
ninety percent of the time this year. So um, I still think they're good. I still think they're fine. They're solid. They just got pooped on for one day, one series, really hard. Um, mm. I think for Eminez, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like he's going for these faker like plays. He's going for really hard, like really disrespectful plays that wouldn't work in a million years unless you're literally like so much better than them. So I think like it's more of a mentality shift for C9 and mm. like. You, like they said it themselves, and I think it's it's pretty clear too that like it wasn't just Fudge and Eminem that the problem, right? Zven got hard support gapped. Uh, I don't know if it's Berserker's fault, but he did get technically gapped too. Like you look at the laning phase, and you know I'm gonna emphasize bot lane more heavily actually than the solo lanes is that F or Ignar is on the map like two to three x more than Zven, and yet FBI has a 20 CS lead. Like, what is Ven doing? What is Berserker doing? What is happening in the bot lane? The camera is mm -hmm. not showing there because Ignar is making a positive play on the other side. So we can't actually see what's going on in the bot lane. Like, we're not viewing it. But, um, yeah, your Kai'Sa or the enemy Kai'Sa should not be 20 CS up on your Zeri or on your Zaya when Ignar is not in the lane at all. Yeah. So that is, to me, was one of the biggest problems of the series. I think if you look at eye test, obviously... Uh, Fudge and Eminence didn't play well, but I mean, the biggest part to me is, is that is Ignar is massively support gapping Sven, and FBI is, I mean, theoretically also ADC gapping Berserker. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on top of that, this is actually the main highlight point that I wanted to make that we haven't gotten to and haven't spoken about yet is I think Blabber had a really bad series. I think you can say all these things can go badly for C9. They can have poor solo lane performances, they can sometimes have a weak performance from Sven, but if Blabber is playing well, C9 still wins because that's what kind of player Blabber is. Blabber, I mean, he has the stat, right? He's got a 69% win rate. Nice, right? Yeah. Uh, he, he has the best uh, win rate in the first 300 games. If Blabber is not playing well, uh, then that's actually the reason why C9 loses. That's the main focal point of this team. Yes, Berserker can carry you in the late game, but Blabber is the main character of the LCS right now. And he's the main character of C9 by a, a lot. So if you look at games two to four, He's playing uh, engaged champions like Rel and Maokai, and he is hard whiffing. Uh, I don't think any of his plays in the early game were disastrous, right? But like, think of like a lot of the things that Blabber did on Rel in the early game. He's like going for Q flashes, and it's not even close to the opponent, and then he doesn't have flash. Maybe he dies, maybe he lives, but also you have to look at C9's comp. They're a hard early game comp that gets outscaled by specifically Kai'Sa. <laughs> so if you early game plays on Rel Rakan or whatever, or Maokai um, Nautilus or whatever it was they were playing, uh, and, and you fail your engages, um, that's time spent where you don't get an advantage, and it's time spent where the Kai'Sa is scaling for free, and guess what? You used your flashes, so now you're actually at a disadvantage for the dragon fight or whatever. And that kept snowballing hard. So I think that, yeah, you know what? Fudge? Could have played a lot better. Eminence could have played a lot better. But um, Blabber, if you're on Rel or Maokai and you whiff your engages, you're the linchpin of your team. Like, you can just call it GG. Like, he's playing badly. Like, C9 has no chance. So as soon as I saw Blabber playing badly in game two, I was, like, pretty off the C9 train. It was like, yeah, and it, like, Contracts is just playing really consistently well. So yeah, um, that, that's, that's actually, like, the thesis of my, like, argument of why C9 losses. I think it was... Blabber not playing at the MVP best level that he could have. Yeah, I think finals. you're. I mean, I think that's absolutely right. I think they, he is pretty much the identity of that team, and I'm I'm glad you mentioned that because you're right. That's probably you know the main point after all these sub points that we're making is that he just wasn't playing well because if he does, then his team has a chance, but it, it really didn't uh, even feel close there uh but here's a question now i guess I, I gotta ask you who do you think are so nrg wins the whole thing but who do you think our best chance uh of like winning worlds is you know of like going the furthest you know of course we're winning worlds but i mean you know yeah, yeah. Like, you know but so which it, na team is beating which na team in the finals exactly right? yeah yeah so who becomes it's like, you know what i'm saying <laughs> so cloud nine energy team liquid or even golden guardians right so you know because i i like all of those teams like i do i think all of those teams 
are great, but which one has the edge? Like, you know, is it NRG? They were first here, but, uh, you know, how do you think they're going to do uh, internationally? I mean, uh, you okay, know? Here, I'm going to give my quick thing, okay? Like, energy is no longer the underdogs now that they win. I oh, think they're going to yeah. lose a little bit of their power. Honestly. You're right. Like, You're like, right. It's good, the, like, the reason why Golden Guardians lost is because they weren't considered underdogs. They're considered the second best team, and then they faltered. And yep. literally no one thought energy was going to win anything at all. So I think it's the baton's going to shift. And it's back to Golden Guardians. I, I mean, I hope. I'm like praying. <laughs> like I want it. That to be true. Or is it Team Liquid? Oh, I mean, Kevin. maybe. Right. But we're not allowed to talk about Team. Liquid. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. right you know, yeah. all about expectations, dude. I swear, it's a mind game. Mean, Liquid, they're pretty dog. But you know, if I could see in the finals, I mean, some, some it. Think and they're a similar players. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Jokes yes. aside, I would say across all of them, I think the one that would do the most damage on average is probably Golden Guardians as well. Even even though yeah, they look dog uh, during the playoffs. They internationally already took a game off BLG, potentially the best team in the world at a certain point, right? Until unless it's against JDG, uh, they also lost against LNG later. But BLG is incredible, and the fact that they took a game where in a best of three where they were like not even out of the other two games is crazy to me. Um. No other team, okay, T1 got him to game five, but I would at least say GGS was, like, pretty good. So I would say they're the most reasonable. NRG has, I didn't bring this up earlier, but NRG has, like, seven coaches. So that's kind of also, like, OP. Um, <laughs> they're all former like, players. Yeah. Like, five of their, yeah, they have Mash Me, Think Card is the head coach. They have Apollo, or with Fusion, Apollo, he's played uh -huh. for ADQ for a while. Demonte, like, so as they so as <laughs> so as yeah, so oh dang yeah, yeah. So i didn't know that stage. i saw i was like what the hell nobody wow. said anything about him but he was there <laughs> yeah. or, Croissant or whatever his name was who's been a league personality for a while he's also coached for a while they have so many coaches and like, i got i mean we didn't mention this earlier but like we were laughing at them like earlier we're like what why are there's like why is there a whole nother team behind them on stage during the uh during the year but NRG kept them on staff they didn't cut any of those jobs they even kept like mash me and all those people who like Almost all these players throughout the history, except for Soaz, are losers. In terms of, they were good players. Like, Finkar was a smart player. Yeah. He wasn't always winning. Apollo was always, like, the fourth best AD carry, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Mash Me was, like, the fifth best jungler. But, I mean, they did something. I mean, they're li they definitely have to be one of the best coach teams, and this is results-based, but it's also just, like, how solid they played, right? Um, so, NRG would probably be the second most likely, and then Team Liquid is, like, the most likely to lose to a wild card, and then also the most likely to take <laughs> off, like, a top... Team Liquid has always gone 3 3 at Worlds. Like, now we look back, that's like the dream, guys. 3 3 actually mm -hmm. gets you out of groups uh, because of the round robin, yeah. or it gets you out of the round robin stage. So, honestly, yeah. Liquid could do better than any other uh, Western team because they have, if Core JJ is firing, they have the firepower. Pioshik literally smurfed all over Owner last year, Peanut last. Uh, actually, did they play against Peanut? Uh, yeah, they beat Peanut 3 1. DRX. Yeah, and then Owner in the finals, right? And Pioshik. While he didn't miss smites, like he was really impactful in a lot of series. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just saying, you count them out. It's, it's kind of terrifying. Some of these guys have proven they don't have good mentals. And Pioshik is like, lol. <laughs> My mid laner yeah. doesn't know English or uh, Korean. Yeah. Now, I think uh, I was going to say Team Liquid myself. Um, you know, and honestly, on the sneak tip, I was kind of rooting for them to to win, like, because I thought they had the best chance uh -huh. against C9 before this weekend, obviously. And, you know, energy. I mean, they won it. We never know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But honestly, you know, uh, OK, you have you're talking about experience here. Piosik, literal world champion, core JJ, literal world champion. Right. And then I, they'll they'll have time in Korea to kind of warm up. Right. And boot camp a little bit. And. You know, if the, what you said was true last year and how they were kind of smurfing in Korea, you know, uh, during their boot camp. You know, maybe they warm up a little bit and maybe um, there's maybe a, a break in communication with APA learning some Korean or something. Right. Uh, but I do think they have the most potential firepower uh, when it comes to international stage. So that's my bet. If I had to place a bet, it would be on Team Liquid. Obviously, I'm rooting for any all any and all NA teams. But I think to me, I think it would be Team Liquid. So um, that's. Yeah. That's my guess. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I, I still am worried about APA. Like, he's playing against NA Miz, and he's getting CS gapped. Like, or do you play against Chobi, bro? Or, like, Knight? <laughs> oh, <laughs> or, like, yeah. Isn't that CS gap? It's gapped not going to be pretty. Like, <laughs> twice as high? Double. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, so, I mean, that's something I am genuinely worried about, like, mm. about APA is that 
every time I praise him, there is that caveat. It's like, you play four champions, and it's not like they're bad champions. They're actually pretty solid, but it's getting to taken advantage of a, a little bit in NA. I can just imagine, like, when you go, like, international mid laners are, like, god tier. Like, they're, like, the best players on their team, you know? So that is scary. Um, I actually think Summit, weirdly enough, is going to be fine in top lane. Obviously, like, he's a Korean top laner, mostly played in Korean leagues and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I think Pioche will be fine. And I weirdly think Yon will be fine. But yeah, I, I mean, my, the person I'm worried about is APA getting lane gaps so hard that it doesn't matter how big his Nico engages are. They're too far behind. Or Core JJ. I mean, he's just making so many bad engages that I just, like, I can't have faith in him anymore. So <laughs> I, I'm I'm hoping that if they pick it up at a Korean boot camp, that they will do well. Um, I'm still excited for, obviously, Golden Guardians and Energy and Cloud9, too, because, um, you know, I, I think they have more, like, consistent team play where it feels like TL is, like, really high highs, really low lows type of team, right? So Team Liquid, yeah. I think the uh, they can hit a home run a couple times and then hit a bunch of stinkers where I see energy and maybe to an extent Cloud9 Golden Guardians, but mostly energy. They'll actually have consistent games and they'll be like that team that maybe like looks like they could have won literally all of their games, but still lost most of them. <laughs> yeah. So and then energy and then Team Liquid will like, I don't know, like get a 25 minute stomper against a top team randomly, but then go, oh, like. Five five losses in a terrible fashion. Lose so there's stuff like that. In a heartbreaker match for getting that round robin, yeah. and it's like, oh my god. It's like, yes, thank you for picking Nar Summit. Let's go. <laughs> I can't oh, wait. Oh my <laughs> gosh, please no. <laughs> An elimination match. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I still have a couple things I want to say about Cloud Nine too. It's like my also, I think my main point about energy is like, I. <laughs> It's so weird, man, like, to come all this way after shit-talking FBI, but I think he was actually, like, probably the main reason why they won most of their series. It was because this dynamic that was just not focused on on the broadcast or by the spectator, that he's up in CS on Kai'Sa and just not dying and playing every team fight pretty darn well. It's not perfect. He's missing a lot of Kai'Sa Ws, which is not good, but, like, he's doing everything else so well that I'm like, dude... This is, like, not FBI of normal regular season. Like, this is FBI of 2021, where he's literally the best ADC in the league. Mm -hmm. I think Berserker, he doesn't get a chance to show why he might be the best ADC in the league, because his team is, like, super weak and it's ADC role. But I feel like FBI was so consistently good and so far ahead. Like, look at his stats. He has 16-1. Like, he's 8-8-1. Eight, eight like, he has some of the most insane stats. He's always ahead in CS, like, freaking 400 CS, a whole 70 or 80 above Berserker. Like, these, this kind of stuff is, like, that's 1v9 material, but then the rest of his team's actually just winning, so every game's a stomp. So, I think secretly, like, my main thesis of why NRG won is that FBI was able to work together with Ignar and the rest of his team to just be monstrously ahead of everybody else in the game. Like, he was just... He's level like 18 when like the when Berserker's like level 16 or 15 or something. Like energy was able to funnel resources into him and just go absolutely 1v9 mode. So I mean, if FBI can like stop inting in the late game randomly, he is the best player at getting himself advantages or at least his team's the best at getting his ADC advantages. Yo, C9 is like the worst at getting Berserker advantages even though he might be the best player in the league. C9 was so terrible at playing around what they're your Draven, their Draven that has a 1k stacks. Why is it that Energy is making a five man play bot lane before C9 is when they have Draven and Renata, like one of the most oppressive lanes in the game? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I really gotta props to C9 FBI. should be afraid of Berserker leaving, dude. He gets left to the wayside all the time, dude. This guy needs yeah. a team around him. Um, yeah. I would I would push back a little bit. I think FBI was incredible in terms of his scoreline, but his like average CS difference was like 0.6 at 15 minutes. Like in the finals, mm -hmm. he did actually do very well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I actually think, like, using the eye touch, like, watching back, like, the 16 5 game, or, like, other times, there were times where he was, like, ulting into melee range, and he, like, his team just, like, bailed him, like, Doko gets a three-man stun, and he flashes out at, like, five health. And I'm like, holy shit, you got away with that? Some of it is playing on the edge, right? Like, Ruler does the same thing, we call him a god. Uh, but I felt like there were enough times where his Kaisa, which I think is disgusting, one of the best in the region, was still going into, like, a lot of sketchy scenarios, and his team would just follow up immediately. So it could just be he's good, 
but I also think like sometimes I'm like objectively like why are you in melee range of uh, Renekton or whatever. I agree with you. No, I 100% agree with you. I feel like he does all the right things in the wrong way. Like he because <laughs> mechanically he is in the right place at the right time. He has like some of the best map rotations, the best farming. Yeah. But when he mm -hmm. mechanically plays the fight, it's like you can Kaisa ulti like to the side, like not right on top of him, and he does it all the time. So I agree with you. I mean, I'm even saying he's missing Kaisa W's that like that should be pretty free, bro. But you whiff that. <laughs> like yeah. same with his Ezreal Qs, right? So I mean, I, I I completely agree on that point. That's why it's hard to like give this guy props, even though he just had the most insane finals of his career. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, and we've always it's kind of been. I mean, even I was saying early on that this guy's consistent. Like, it just, I don't know what it is. Like, he doesn't have that, like, oh, like, highlight playmaker, like, hands, you know, 1v9 type plays. But he's always good. He's just, his number lines are good. Uh, he's kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, a, a Bjergsen, but in a, in a role that matters, like, right now. Like, where he, he actually has to, you know, get kills and stuff. But... Uh, but I mean, Worlds doesn't start till I think October 10th, the play-in stage. Um, so we've got some time. What What do you want to talk about to finish this episode out? Because it's going to be a while till our next one, unless we we have uh, some news or anything like that. What is there anything else that you guys wanted to just highlight, talk about before? Because we kind of have this this gap now. Um, yeah, I wanted to quickly highlight that once again, T1 loses in a grand finals. It's the mm -hmm. fifth time in a row, guys. Yeah. It was a 3-0. 3-0, uh, I know. Games, at least the last game had, it had to be a T1 win. I have no idea how they lost that. Like, when this roster, like, we say there's no point, right? Because Worlds matters the most. Does this roster break up? Mm. No, like, I don't I, think so. Really? They're just going to keep losing in finals? Yeah, because, oh. you know what? I think a lot of teams in orgs underestimate that it's actually really hard to lose to get to finals to lose in it. I genuinely yeah. think so. I mean, I, I agree. genuinely think that like, you know what, man, like so many teams take for granted the fact that they're even there in the first place. They change something. They don't even get there in the first place. So I don't think you change anything, right? I don't think there's any change or team or player you can make unless it's a completely unknown diamond in the rough mm -hmm. that like suddenly makes you win over these other teams. So if you change owner out for like a cannon, they automatically win way more i don't believe that have you seen canyon that guy has no brain bro <laughs> yeah, and, he has, and he's got faker mid have you seen owner without faker that guy was so dumb was <laughs> yeah. really canyon. i think you're you're comparing to me like one potato versus a slightly different color potato like i, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know and they become flowers the second they have faker two two saying. potatoes baby, baby i mean i'm down to see it happen i just think if i'm t1 i from like just like seeing what's happening with Faker, seeing what's happening with the rest of the org when he leaves, I'm not going to make any changes unless I have to, unless Faker decides to retire, right? Because it's like, this team is on the nice edge of not being in the finals, period. So I'm not going to change anything. It's like, it's crazy. Gonna, yeah. I mean, even the fact, again, like, this is what makes Faker's GOAT status even more solidified, as if you needed any more reasons. The fact that he was out, T1 looks like dog poo-poo, and then... He comes back in and they literally, when nobody really thought they were going to, you know, get up there, they, they almost win it again. Like, I mean, in, in just convincing fashion, like winning game fives and just, you know, coming out in the clutch. And, you know, I was just saying like the Faker will forever. I don't think there will ever be another player in any region that will come close to to being compared to Faker. Honestly, I just don't think yeah, it'll ever happen. Me, bro. Have you heard I mean, Palafaker, bro? He's a <laughs> Faker to town. I mean, I My fault. My bad. are quick to forget, okay? Michael Jordan gets forgotten. Not forgotten, but you know, they, they move the GOAT conversation every 20 years or so. That's true. It, I guess... Yeah, and I guess our, you know, this eSport is still relatively young, so yeah. we'll have to see, but at least I just don't see it. Like, who? Who? Who could do it? I just he might not be born yet. That person well, might not be born. Yeah, yet. but think about it, right? Like at least at least like when Michael Jordan yeah. like when Michael Jordan retired, you know, Kobe was already playing, right? When Kobe yeah. was but close to retiring, LeBron was already playing. And people kind of could see, oh, here's the next possibility. There is nobody that I think is playing right now where I would be like, eh, that's close to faker status uh, right I think, there. I think Ruler could do it. I genuinely think if Ruler does the Grand Slam this year, I think, and he continues to be dominant next year, I think people will start thinking about Ruler. Ruler's just been at the top of his game for so long. It's, like, hard not that's, to yeah. 
And he's yeah, he's been there for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And the argument will always come up. It has been seven years. In a, no, Baker's won one domestic title in seven years. No, that's that. true. He has he won. He's won a couple he more than. He's won a couple there. more, but at least it's not a lot. It's usually it's not a lot, and he yeah. hasn't won worlds. Which, to be fair, most people haven't won worlds even once or twice max, right? Yeah. Right. Ruler wins the Grand Slam. That's a that's an achievement no one's ever achieved. And Ruler is still at the peak of his performance mechanically. He might not be the shot caller, but I mean, just like how Uzi always gets the props, right? For being for the longest time, he was like the second in line just because he's got the best hands. Uh, at least he looks flashy, right? But in terms of brains, in terms of what you bring to the team, like Baker does, did both at, sometimes at the same time. That's absurd. Yeah. Uh, so I think it, the people who were there for it will always put Baker first. Um, but. It, it it might not take it would, it would take like two back to back worlds and then they're like okay this guy's then you go yeah like, I, I I could see now. it's more yeah. competitive now El yeah. wasn't around yeah at, that's at true moment. I think it would honestly it would have to take like Faker retiring or like not making a couple of appearances in like MSI or Worlds and then Ruler doing it a couple times for it, yeah. the conversation to actually swift because like that's how long it's taken for Blabber just an NA right it's mm -hmm. literally taken double lift and Beershin retiring and like coming back and not succeeding for blabber and winning everything for blabber to actually be in the conversation of goat like i think if blabber won this lcs people would start being like maybe blabber is the new goat but he mm -hmm. didn't and it's hard i get it for him to you know overcome what bjergsen and double did but like yeah i mean it's gonna take a lot like ruler even though he's been around in the wild he's one of the actual like i mean if you think about it right ruler when he won worlds for the first time it was his play flashing onto Varus onto karma that won him his first title i think ruler is the next in line but like you know i'm still gonna take a bit to warm up to it <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure yeah. i mean yeah. we've never seen a single player leave a roster and just do that much like yeah. literally his team looked like the last place team in the in the league that, that's a great point because ruler left gen g and guess what gen G's still the best team and pays looks like one of the best players so like that mm -hmm. is a great point where it's like yeah, Ruler could be in the next conversation, but, like, Ruler leaves, and you can still do it with another mm. player, right? If mm -hmm. leaves, you can't do that with another you player. You couldn't do that, no. So I think that's a roster is crazy. His, yeah. his roster is absurd. He's probably yeah. one of the best on-paper rosters in recent history, if ever, right? Yeah. Uh, like, across every role. Like, if Missing is your quote-unquote worst player or, or can I be on a bad day, like, that's absurd to me, right? Yeah. While, like, Faker, we saw his players without him on it. Like, he might be the <laughs> difference maker. His players are good. They can't actually be that stupid, but he's definitely doing a lot of work, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think Faker still has a conversation for him for a while. Um, but, I mean, it, it, you know, maybe in a few years we could actually save Ruler, depending on how things shift. Uh, I, I want, did, did you guys catch the KT versus T1 rematch? Cause yeah, they, I did. We, we didn't yeah. talk oh about it. Oh, my gosh. Then, that you know, thing that, was... Okay, like, Woo! I was getting some serious DRX versus T1 Game 5 vibes. Literally no objective that any team started, like they got. They got it. it. it yeah. Aaron seals and an elder dragon steal. That match like, was so absurd. Crazy. Owner, my goodness, bro. Land a smite, and then when you're all mad at him for not landing any smites, he lands the last smite the of last the game, and they win it. And I'm like, okay, bro. I don't even know what to say about you. I, don't I know love what to say those about games. Idiots. Like it's yeah. so insane. <laughs> I wanted to point out to the, that match though. Like I'm, I got upset with that match because I'm like, we always hear the shit like. Like LCK is so much better macro wise. They're not like they're so much smarter, dude. T1 just closes their eyes, looks at the timer, like, oh, it's 21 minutes, 20 minutes. Let me clock in at Baron with their friggin' eyes closed. They just do Let's it. Start it, baby. <laughs> like, I don't know that, um, LS and other people were like exaggerating, but then I saw the last two best of fives. I'm like, they, it's actually just like clockwork. Like, when they don't do it, I'm like, is something wrong? Like, does someone get sick? <laughs> they, I yeah. don't think they're that smart sometimes. Sometimes I feel like it's like almost a cheese strap. Um, at the very least, you look at that game fine, you cannot tell me that wasn't a class A fiesta. Like, it was entertaining as hell. Oh, yeah. Why is it just a flip every time and a steal? <laughs> or stolen no. once. What is this? Yeah. Yo, uh, honestly, NRG plays their Baron setups way better than <laughs> T1, right? You have Ignar, who actually is peeling the enemy uh. jungler. And then T1 is just like, all right, we finish, we send, we end. Oh, God. Poppy was sitting in a bush for two minutes, and he got it. <laughs> he still uh, played for this. Oh, oh, no. Vagar, BDD on Vagar, flashes in, he's 50 CS down, he kills owner, and he smites it with Summer Spellbook. Like, it's the most monkey stuff ever. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> I'm just like, I just sit here, and I'm like, I remember Dignitas did a content piece where they watched Faker's plays, right, and had Jensen and someone else, maybe Santorin, rate who, what elo they think this player is. But they, they did, yeah. Every time, they didn't say the name. Plates, right? Yeah. yeah. I think it was like, world's plays with, like, 
fake around a Kali or other icon places. They're like, oh yeah, maybe like Plat, maybe <laughs> Diamond. And I was like, it's a name brand that like goes a long way. I mean, obviously, it's just so hard to tell when name plays off. Sometimes like Fiesta raises Fiesta, right? Um, yep. Even JDG just looks like a Fiesta team sometimes, but they then they play better. Uh, so all I'm saying is like, guys, like LCK is super in, was super entertaining for playoffs. They're not perfect. No team is perfect. Like no. League is just not a game for perfect teams anymore. Once they got rid of lane swap, once they get, got rid of multi multiple words from one player, the game just like completely shifted to more fiesta, and that's what League will always be unless Riot makes a League two and just like reworks the game. I guess. Yeah. I mean, even look at JDG, right? Like they're far from perfect. Like you look at their series against LNG in the finals for LPL. Uh, it looked like from my personal eye test that LNG was the better team and JDG was that, that like, that like, you know, Asia or C9 effect where it's like, yeah, you're winning, you're beating us. And then we just win the last th team fight and then we win the game. Like JDG did a lot of that in their series against LNG. And it's like, okay, well, JDG is also far from perfect. They just are really good at team fighting and have the best They're ABC. They're also really good at game five. They have yeah. not, yeah, I mean, too. they haven't lost a single series all year, right? Not just are they going to the Grand Slam. They, they've hit game by multiple times and pre been pressured multiple times. T1, LNG, and then they just always clutch it in the last game. That is a skill. Like Yeah, that is a oh, skill. Oh, for sure. And it's it's like, a clutch like, skill. <laughs> you can yeah. still like compare them, though, to LNG and BLG and be like, yo, JDG does a, thing, a lot of things worse than these other yeah. teams. It's just that they clutch it out and are more cool or calm in the game five, but like... There is no team that's even close to perfect, right? Maybe if you combine all the powers of LNG, JDG, and BLG, and Gen G into one team, maybe that's as close as you get to perfect, right? But, like, I mean, Gen G, you still got Doran doing some weird stuff. Like, you still got um, Kanavi doing weird stuff. Missing is definitely, like, the weakest member of JDG's team. Like, it's just all inconsistent. Like, that's just League of Legends. So, like, um... Chovy said in an interview he had a he had a secret that he wasn't going to tell anybody of why he could beat uh started being able to beat Faker in finals right because when he was on Griffin and when he was starting off on different rosters like DRX and stuff he could never beat Faker in finals mm -hmm. uh, and he has a secret that he's not telling anybody I think it's pretty obvious he's turned nameplates off right and that's exactly mm -hmm. what uh other uh, players have said in NA is that they just turned their nameplates off against Blabber right and then boom they can suddenly play differently they can suddenly play a bit better it's like so much of it is mental right. BLG versus JDG, T1 versus Gen G, like it's all mental, man. Like every team is very, very flawed. I do know? this. I do the same thing, but for the reason of uh, sometimes I can't tell what champions are what because the skins make them look the same, and so I like to put the. <laughs> hey, problem, though. <laughs> I'm yeah, telling you, that's though. what I'm <laughs> saying. So that that's you know, so mine's a little different reason, but I do the same thing. But uh, you know, I just real quickly, I wanted to just bounce off that thought of. Uh, you know, the, the chaotic Fiesta games are the most entertaining, even if it's really badly, right? Like, I'm like, on my, this is the, these are the games I like. And I, and, you know, Riot obviously has had the, the power creep and, you know, we're just seeing people blow up, more fights. Mm -hmm. And just like with other sports, man, like basketball changed a lot of rules to make it more swayed to have lots more easy, you know, dunks or offensive action to make you go, ooh, ah, because at the end of the day, that brings in the money, right? So if you want to see like more pure basketball, you're looking at like high school games and football. Same thing, like football, like they they made rules change where you know uh, quarterbacks protected more, so you can get more plays off. It's all designed to make it more appealing to the audience because that's who's you're buying your product, right? And so it wouldn't surprise me if if league continues down this path of you know making. You know, that's why the champs nowadays all have dashes and blinks and resets and, and poke and poke and invulnerability when you land the poke <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> all op as hell <laughs> all made for I fighting kaisa from fbi fighting berserker came over the wall at bot near dragon and kaisa iso did like a thousand damage with his q and then just killed oh, yeah. him instantly yeah and i was just like berserker had a 1000 cool shutdown how did the 80 how did kaisa just win that hard yeah. You just instant burst them. Q, oh, W, auto, auto. Just and that's auto what I mean. The legends, baby. <laughs> it's, I think it's going to continue down that trend where, you know, it's going to be more uh, incentives for you to just keep fighting because <laughs> it's just fun and people like that. And that will probably be kind of towards where the meta goes. But uh, I just wanted to throw that in there because you brought up a really good point. And I think it's a product at the end of the day. We're the, we're the buyers and we want to watch really exciting, even if it's bad league of legends. So, um, I just wanted to highlight I that. Entertaining league of legends is the only good league of legends. 
I think. Oh yeah. Even if I can appreciate macro, like if I watch it every game, it becomes normal, and then it just. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I do not ever yeah. want to go back to the season four like wards just choke you out. Samson White yeah. just eats you alive. Like it was so boring. There was no. Yeah, I mean, well, well, that was the old meta with with Korean teams, right? S scale and then win team fights, and you know LPL, and as they made champion changes and meta changes, it got more skewed to more skirmishes and that was kind of a new style where like oh this is exciting this is fun to watch right and so now i think we're kind of figuring out that balance because you do have to still have some scaling because if you just overly index into early game and it doesn't work because you have to make it work then you are pretty much screw you're on a timer so it is neat to see that there has to be a little bit of both uh you know do you have some scaling at least I, I do think there is a problem with League of Legends when we're talking about the scaling stuff, that there are too many champions that are good enough in the early game that yeah. still scale into absolute Really monsters. well, yeah, like for that's, sure. That's yeah. been the problem with, like, you know, champs like Zaya and Kai'Sa and Zeri. They're just too solid in early game laning, and they scale infinitely. And same champs with, like, Jax. Like, why is that well, champion Felios, so like... good at laning and insane? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Felios, Azir, right? I think he's a bit different now, but... Azir and Jace are these champions that have some of the most insane laning faces possible in the mid in the mid lane, and yet they scale like some of the best in the game too. So I think Riot needs to really think about these things and why these champions keep oppressing, you know, pro play. Like think of Cassante. Hmm. Well, <laughs> carries too, but like yeah. Cassante is like he had to get a lot of nerfs, but he is still very, very good and consistent in the early game laning phase, and he becomes a god tier monster in the late game. Yeah. Like so, I mean, I think these balance decisions are interesting, but there's so many champions that, like, 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 look at Nocturne, okay? He got played this this in this playoffs, and it's not like he's a bad champion, yeah. but that is, like, premium old type of League of Legends where that guy does one thing, he does it pretty good, <laughs> yeah. if it doesn't work out past 25 minutes, he is a completely useless Yeah, turn. useless, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Look at Bane. Bane is, like, an actual AD carry with a design where their early game is dog. They can't yeah. push with, without ship. Mm -hmm. And then she she scales really well, but she's super useless up to us, like two items. She's super useless, even like and there's also like the range creep too, yeah. right? Like the kind of range stuff that like the champions I'm talking like Jace and Azir and then Kaisa and Zaya. You can't even hit them. Yeah, they have so much range so and they're awesome. scaling and they have the best wave clear and the laning phase and Bane's like. Uh, if you stand there still for a bit, I will blow you up. But you gotta yeah. stand real still for me, okay? <laughs> like... mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely. We live in a yeah. game where Gwyn's rage like gives five percent armor pen and four percent magic pen per legendary, while other items give like five AD or five ability haste. Like I, I'm or just like, like... Sitting like <laughs> who came up with this? Even like uh, Eclipse and Sunder give like three three percent and for Eclipse like four yeah. percent armor pen. They're literally yeah. just worse. Like I don't yeah. understand how this is even relatively balanced it's not like glints is a weak item yeah yeah, yeah. and then you have gore drinker that gives you three ability haste and like 20 hp <laughs> <laughs> so bad yeah. it's like the worst go, one go 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 lose yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i got a last thing about itemization it's a both a funny note and a sad note you guys already know it's going yep. uh evan shroud uh, uh emina has built evan shroud kraken slayer on yon that is taking it too far my guy <laughs> like that's taking it way too far dude like Dang. i get it it's a good item it's kind of funny it's a good meme chovy did it with evan shroud in blade of the rune king yo it's too far you did it's too much do please don't ever build evan shroud kraken slayer ever again man I was like hyped that he built it and kind of was hoping it would work, but also I was like, it's so bad, bro. It's so terrible. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So, League of Legends was players are the type of people who <laughs> see a kit that doubles your crit rate for free, and then they're like, yeah, even Trump. Evan Trump. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Toby did it, so I'll do it. I'm like, yeah, Toby did disgusted. it. Yeah. I, I mean, I was just like, I don't. Haha, -ha, I guess you built it. <laughs> it works yeah. uh, if you're Chovy, but um, I don't think it's good. Uh, so that was a funny note. I'm not going to say that that actually made a difference. I don't. I think they would have lost anyways if he built correctly or not. Um, he was playing too poorly on the own for it to really matter. Um, but here's the sad news. Everybody's going to cry. Four worlds, patch 13.17. Evan Shroud is getting nerfed pretty hard. It's going from a 10% no. damage increase to a 7% damage increase. And yeah, guys, I think that's that's enough to kill the item. I don't know if it's gonna like make it un 
buildable, but seeing like two or three or four every game is not going to be a thing anymore. No. It's only going to be good if it's like tempo buy. Like, we need to win this dragon fight or something, this herald fight. I have 2300 gold. What am I going to buy? But don't do it on Yone. And the conditions like fit perfectly, right? They have a bunch of CC, UFCC, yeah, like stuff like yeah. that, right? Like, and you have like, other damage that can carry. You don't need, yeah. you just have, you're like the initiate, right? Like, yeah. It's not so, always terrible, but when he built it, I was like, brother. Yeah. I mean, if there's worse items to build, you could have built a Ludens, I guess, but <laughs> like, damn, bro. <laughs> That's rough. Uh, but yeah, for future Evan Shroud buyers, as soon as patch 13.17 comes out, yeah, you shouldn't probably spam that item anymore. I haven't spammed it yet. I don't think you should yeah. spam it anymore after those nerfs. Pretty big nerfs. Pretty harsh. So big. Deserved. Yeah. Deserved. I mean, we've been having a lot of fun with it, so I guess it's about time uh, to do that. Well, uh, that, so that, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for us. Uh, we don't know. I don't know when that our next episode will be just because we've got a little bit of a gap, but maybe there will be some news. Maybe uh, the teams that are not in Worlds will make some roster changes, and we can talk about that. We'll just have yeah, to we see. Talk a little bit about LEC is still going, right? Yeah, LEC is still going, so we could probably do that, or uh, you know, yeah. I have a last topic to talk about. Is actually a quick question. Um, NA is the only region without a gauntlet. Actually, it's weird how things have finally flipped around since franchising started in 2018. That. And hey, it's the only region without a gauntlet anymore. Technically, LECs is called the season finale, but it works almost exactly like a gauntlet. Mm -hmm. LPL, with their uh, format changes and the additions of all their teams, they still manage to fit in a gauntlet uh, with all the games they play. And LZK, yeah, they changed their format around, but they didn't get rid of the gauntlet. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Should NA start having a gauntlet again? Do you like not having a gauntlet? And maybe other regions should just not have it? Or, you know, what's your opinions on gauntlets in general? I prefer gauntlets. I like having the whole, like, run the gauntlet. There are just teams who are always good at that. And honestly, the gauntlet teams usually do better than the other teams. Like, Samsung was a gauntlet team traditionally. C9 was a gauntlet team traditionally. Mm -hmm. I think it's just, like, the best test and gets you the most reps in, too. So, like, I just think more exciting for game formats that encourage more exciting games are just better. I mean, in lieu of that, we get the fourth place match between EU and us, which is also super hype. And yeah. We're also playing in Korea now. So, that's super hype. I'd love to talk about whoever gets fourth. Uh, after next week's season finals, but yeah, yeah uh, I, I think that Gauntlet should stay. Um, they might put it in, because we're going to have three splits next year, allegedly, so, I mean, yeah, maybe. I like Gauntlets. I like it. I'm the same way. I think for every reason you, you uh, said there, Kevin, and plus it's just something more with stakes, right? So it's, it's good to see, and there could be, whenever there's a potential for an upset or a surprise, like, that's what makes it entertaining because then you have a storyline to kind of root for or root against and i think that's always going to be uh, fun to have so i actually wouldn't wouldn't mind that i think that would be great um you know to go but i i like our representatives this year so i'm okay with it <laughs> you know what i mean so I like our i'm okay i'm okay with uh this year but i again in the future years i would i wouldn't mind seeing it so it could be good but it is it kind of weird fun. here's here's the the point against the gauntlet is right you have a you have a team like you know Golden Guardians, for example, in NA, they would not be qualified right now. Um, and they would have stomped the entire regular season, had kind of a rough playoffs, but they did still win a series in playoffs. They could go into the gauntlet. It's not their patch or their meta. And they could just lose, even though they did everything right for the entire season. Same thing with KT, right? KT went, like, what, 15-1 and one or 16-1, and one, whatever the record is. They won. They, they lost two series in the close best of five, which means that they are not that bad of a team. Right, even though they lost, they did win a series against HLE pretty handedly, and yet the meta could change, patch could change during Gauntlet, and they could just lose. So maybe the idea is you're supposed to keep the patch the same when you hit the Gauntlet, but maybe, no yeah. region actually does that. <laughs> they yeah. do change the patch when they hit the Gauntlet, so I don't know. It's like KT could still miss <laughs> Worlds, considering mm -hmm. everything that they did right for all year. So I think that's the argument against the Gauntlet that a lot of people would uh consider but, but again uh, that's what makes it that's what makes it exciting makes right it exciting like for the viewers. unless you're a kt <laughs> fan or unless you're like a golden guardians i feel like one that's on the cusp right yeah. but also like you know you've said it before like you don't care what teams have done in the beginning of the split right it's all sure. what matters towards the end because if you're looking for who's the best representative of worlds well if this is the world's patch even though it's the newest one who's who can show that they, they can do it and have adapted to it and whatnot. And honestly, like Golden Guardians or KT, yeah, while they could, you know, lose and not be that in that situation, like chances are they would probably still do it. That That's the point, yeah. right? Like, because they then if they are, and stuff. exactly. And 
and you know they they're getting more reps in so potentially they they win the thing and then go in with even more practice on whatever patch the thing has gone i mean i just i just like finding all good excuses for it because i just i think it it is fun but you're right yeah, we yeah. all want more high stick matches. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I, yeah, that, 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 yeah. That. I mean, you've grown very wise in your old age, League Dad. Like, I mean, know, it's about time. Glasses, hard to read. I still need you to. Games. I still need you to tell me everything to build uh, in ARAM, and uh, you know. All I need that to stuff. tell you what champion I'm playing. <laughs> what champ are you playing? Yeah, I mean, that's what you. Oh, yeah. You'll be in a game in <laughs> ARAM, and you'll be like, it'll be ten minutes in the game, and you'll be like. Wait, what champ are you again? <laughs> because I turned nameplates off. I told you, and then I didn't even look at champ select, like who like you I'm were. Standing so right like... next to you, dancing or something. You're like, hey, what champ are you again? I'm like, like what am I? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty okay. fun. Anyways, okay. that's why you need uh, to like <laughs> yeah, brand new glasses. Maybe I can read better. Uh, well, that's gonna that's gonna do it. Uh, I think we've got a pretty comprehensive episode. I appreciate uh, Kevin and Mitchell, Kevin especially because you're sick right now, so uh, get some rest, and we'll be ready for a new episode. But I'm excited for all the new stuff to come. You got something, Mitchell? Energy one. What the that's hell? That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, literally, (laughs) the last episode title was NRG to the moon, and daggone it, it happened. Congratulations to them. I'm so confused still. I feel like we didn't even, we talked about it so much, and I feel like we still didn't even, like, address it. Like, (laughs) it's weird, guys. Energy won, and I don't even know if, like, I don't even know how to feel. It's just weird. Like, they won. It's weird. It is really weird. There are times when an underdog team wins, and, like, some people are like, yeah, I think they could do it. Like, they still have some pretty good stuff. I mean, this no, is one of that was times where genuinely nobody believed in them. <laughs> like, I mean, I gotta think I should have went. I I believe Al, didn't Alistair go to? Wasn't he in New Jersey? He, he went to the finals, there, right? Yeah. That's the one I should have went to that because that would have been. I bet I'm sure it was super hype in the stadium. I mean, it was uh, it was crazy. I don't nuts, like nuts, you man. watch Energy play literally the day before, and you're like, yeah, I think C9's gonna win. Yeah, and you yeah. Game one, you're like, yeah, I think C9's gonna win. Yeah, and you're like, holy shit. Energy's winning. I still don't believe it. They're on game great, four man. or whatever, ending the Nexus. I'm like, you know what? I think C9 can still come back. <laughs> like, I, just uh, I love so. League of Legends, man. I was telling you guys in the Discord after that game five KT and T1, I was like, I love League of Legends, man. This is yeah. It's for moments like that. It's 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 always surprising. But anyways, that's going to do it for us. Thanks again for all of you listening. Uh, let us know in the comments or whatever your thoughts. Join our Discord, all of that good stuff. We love having people talk about League. But until next time, enjoy your climb on the Rift. Try not to be too too toxic and we'll see you all in the next episode peace